So you've got all these investments, and then suddenly there's an economic downturn, which the economy cycle is like seasons. You have winter and you have summer. So what's going to happen then? It could fall like dominoes. You know, everyone could freak out and start selling. Beauty lies in the action of living you every day. Freedom is knowing it'll still be there tomorrow. Yeah, they, they both had their merits and there's also obviously concerns as well from the perspective from a passive side of things. My concern is that you've got a, a number of people seeing index funds as the flavour of the month and what they're doing... Well, they were. They're probably not at the moment. <laughs> yeah, they're probably freaking out a little bit. But like, you, you think about if you've got um, a person that's directly invested in a sh passively managed index fund, shares, and uh, they, they don't have their emotional support. So suddenly you have a situation like the coronavirus and they're not quite sure why they invested, what the underlying reasons are for doing so. And now there's not as many barriers for them to make a buy and sell decision. So suddenly you've got all these people that don't have quite the emotional fortitude or understanding yet to know when to hold and when to sell. And they effectively can do it very quickly. So you've got all these investments and then suddenly there's an economic downturn which the economy cycle is like seasons, you have winter and you have summer. So what's going to happen then? It could fall like dominoes, you know, everyone could freak out and start selling and, and realise, crystallise that loss. Well, well that's a contagion effect, isn't it? But, you know, people sell and because there's more sellers than buyers the price drops. Uh, wonderful opportunity for the counter-cyclical investor mm. uh, because the prices are falling and they're buying into that uh, as long as they're comfortable and believe the prices will recover. The, the issue often, and this is a good advertisement for people like Ryan and myself, is that those people who have got an advisor that they are comfortable with, if you like, their trusted advisor, they're not likely to make irrational decisions that will cost them money because someone will sit down and talk to them about, let's have a look at the, you know, what's really happening here. Um, are these companies we've invested in uh, worth less than what uh, they were in the past? Uh, it, because there's a drop in price, is that more about supply and demand? Has there been a change to their, their business model? Is there going to be a, a short term or a longer term? term effect on profitability and every company is a little bit different, every organisation is a little bit different. Um, if you've got an advisor there, you will make a rational informed decision. If there is no advisor there, uh, all you're hearing is the, 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 the voice in your head, you're reading the papers, listening to the news and you're going to get a very one-sided view of the world. The media are not necessarily known to give balanced advice. You know, it, it, you know, it's an old saying, isn't it? it you know, it's bad news that sells. Mm. It's not good news. You know, the headlines are always about the extreme, and then you read the article, and actually, you know, it's not that extreme. <laughs> you know. But uh, what's the other? I think the other thing: if it bleeds, it leads. Is that the famous newspaper saying? If it bleeds, it leads, and. I know that there's a lot of people out there who have made investment decisions not on the basis of, an of the advice of an advisor, but they've made it on the basis of the advice of friends uh, or on the basis of something they've read, a newspaper columnist, uh, and I think those people are gurus. They're not gurus at all. They're just basically um, selling a story and they're not going to be accountable. So I remember years ago, uh, a columnist used to suggest to people that all they should do is put all their money into um, a world share market index because it was cheap and it followed the world share market index and everyone could see over time that global shares outperformed every other type of investment and it was wonderful. And then 2008, 2009 came along and it was less than wonderful. Yeah. Those people would have panicked, sold, crystallised a loss and not that it was a good decision in the first place 
But if they'd actually got a bit of advice and, and you know, hunkered down and soldiered through, they'd have come out the other side and then hopefully rebalanced so they had an investment strategy that wasn't all about one type of investment sector but was actually balanced across cash, bonds, property and equities reflecting their risk tolerance and everyone's different because we're all in different times of our life and have different needs and different resources, they'll have a much happier outcome.